So the title in hand is Potency Assessment of Foot and Mouth Disease Vaccines Using Standardized Serological Assays. And as you know, as we already know that European Pharmacopoeia prescribes challenge protection studies for determination of PD50 of a vaccine. And the challenge protection test for determination of uh, potency of FMD vaccines as prescribed in the European Pharmacopoeia has some limitations. For example, uh, risk of escape of live virus from the facility, and therefore experimental animals are required to be housed in uh, biosecurity housing to overcome this escape. And then uh, <coughs> making such tests very expensive and cause animal welfare problems as well. And then one valency can be tested at a given time, and the tests have very low precisions. And one sixteenth of the dose is very difficult to measure, and sometimes it results in over or underestimation of the potency of FMD vaccines. So, actually, uh, serological based uh, methods have also been prescribed in the European Pharmacopoeia, provided that there is a correlation between antibody titer and protection. And there are a lot of studies. Uh, that basically, and uh, such uh, serological assays have advantages, for example, logistical problems are overcome, no security hazards, and thus making this uh, test uh, relatively inexpensive, more than one valency can be tested in a given time, and simultaneous testing of several vaccines. And there have been so many published studies on the correlation between antibody titer and protection, so a list of studies. And the correlation between antibody titer and level professions are accepted worldwide, and test results are often vary considerably between the laboratories. This is the main issue in the correlation between antibody titer and level of protection. Every lab has its own uh, threshold value, which is different from the other laboratory. And this difference may be due to uh, root, of, uh, root and dose of challenge virus, and condition of the cattle, interval between vaccination and challenge, and the type of the serological assays performed to determine antibody titer, and sensitivity of the cells that is used in neutralization assays. So the objective of this study was to standardize antibody titer against O. Maniza for determination of vaccine potencies using two different approaches. First, to use a standard commercial prior check serotype O ELISA, and the second approach was to include a standard four-week post-vaccination serum from a cow vaccinated with the O Maniza FMD vaccine to calculate unit of antibody titer in both ELISA and VNT. So serum samples from 18 potency tests were available, and the serum samples were collected on the day of challenge. So we already knew whether animals were protected after challenge or not uh, in case of vaccination. So a total of 10 uh, potency test samples from Belgium, six from Netherlands, and two from Perbright were available. Standard control serum that was obtained from four-week post-vaccination serum from O. Maniza vaccinated cattle, cow, and serum samples were tested in the respective laboratories using neutralization tests and using ELISA. So in neutralization test, the cells were different. For example, in the Belgium, they use BHK. In the Netherlands, they use porcine kidney cells. And in the United Kingdom, that is IBRS2. Uh, then uh, the unit of antibody titers were determined by subtracting the log titer of a standard uh, control serum from that of the test serum. And the results were analyzed using ANOVA, post hoc test, and then logistic regression. So antibody titer in the control serums, we found significant differences in the titer of the control serum in different laboratories, both in ELISA and in VNT, using ANOVA and post hoc tests. As far as the test serums were concerned, so we found significant uh, uh, this graph basically shows VNT titers, 
and the blue light, uh, line shows pure bright, the red Brussels and the black one, Lely state. So there were significant differences in the uh, antibody titer versus protection. In case of ELISA, again, there were significant differences between the laboratories and the slope of the antibody uh, titer versus protection was steeper in case of VNT as compared to ELISA. Then we converted antibody titer into unit of antibody titer by subtracting log of the control serum from the test serum. And here you can see this is log of unit of antibody titer in VNT and log of unit of antibody titer in case of ELISA. So the differences were reduced, but they were not eliminated. And significant differences were still present in this case. So in conclusion, the inclusion of the standard serum reduced variation between the laboratories. However, significant differences were still present, which could be due to differences in vaccine composition. And uh, this is a good way to reduce, but we cannot eliminate these differences, which we thought. So we recommend that a cattle vaccinated with one third of a standard dose that is containing three PD-50 should have an average of antibody titer at least as high as that of a standard serum representing 50% protection, but further studies are required to, to establish this. And I acknowledge uh, the collaborators, CVI Lillestead, Belgium and Pirbright for this work and also thanks to the UFMD for supporting my participation in that. So this is all. Any questions?